Hey, this is Russ Anderson. Today we're going to take a look at offset tracking, which is a way to do more difficult tracks by starting with a simpler track that's in a nearby location. Now in this particular shot, we've got a concrete truck driving along. And we actually want to track something right at the very front corner of this truck. And the problem is going to be that the background is changing very often as the truck drives along. So what we're going to do is start out by tracking this light here. And it turns out that this light is flashing, if you see. So what we're going to do to address that is first we're going to go over to the image preprocessor. That was the P key that I just hit. And uh, we're going to turn on the high pass filtering that's going to give us a value, you know, an image that takes the changing lighting out of the picture more. So here we're going to drop a supervised tracker right on that light. Make it a little bit smaller. And uh, we'll just increase the search size a little bit because the truck is bouncing around. And let's see, we'll create a key now and again and we'll set up so that we can blend between keys. So this is just a standardized uh, supervised tracking workflow with just a little wrinkle of taking out the, the lighting of the flashing light a little bit. So I just went through and just adjusted those keys slightly. So now I've got a nice smooth blended track. Now we'll just go and turn that high pass filtering back off. And we can lock that tracker back up. Now that's going to be our reference tracker, kind of the base tracker from which we're going to be doing the offset tracking. But uh, since we've, we've set up one tracker already, we want to keep that. There's no reason to do away with it. Uh, for the offset tracker on the front of the truck, we're actually going to clone that basic tracker to create our new offset tracker. So now we actually have two of them. We have the original one, and we have this one that uh, has the offset on it. And I can just take that offset and drag it out to the place where I want to track. Now I just hit the 5 key so that we're going to have the camera view be carried along there with the tracker. And you can see by the end of the shot the uh, orientation of the truck and size of the truck has changed enough so our, the fixed offset that we set up initially is no longer valid. So what we're going to do is just uh, drag that back into position creating a key on that offset track. And now we're just going to go back through the shot to a couple of different places and keep on doing that. Each spot, we're just going to make sure that we have the tracker in the right location. So we're just tuning it back up. And I can do that out in the workspace, or I can do that over here, or I could use the uh, offset values themselves. And you know, depending on how complex the motion is of the truck, in this case, you know, I, I might need different numbers of keys on the offset channel to be able to get that motion uh, of the offset tracker to follow the thing that I wanted to track. So the motion is pretty simple. You won't need uh, very many different keys. If there's some very complex motion controlled camera move that's going all over the place and you need a whole lot of keys on the offset track, then probably you want to be doing it a different way anyway. But for a s relatively simple camera motion, this is really a piece of cake. And you can see, you know, as I scrub through, you can see the tremendously changing background that this particular location is moving past. And we would have had to key very, very often if we were doing this as a supervised tracker directly. Now I can turn that offset back off and on as much as I want. I just turned it back off and now I've got the, you know, this is the offset tracker, but it's the underlying supervised data for it. 
And I can still drag around that offset position and create a key. And nothing else, nothing else changes. I'm just, I'm just changing the offset at this point in time. If I turn the offset back on, you'll see that uh, you know, now, now I've switched back to the location at which the uh, the view is is panning to uh, to follow. And up at the top, you notice that you know here when the offset button is on, the keys that you see up in the time bar are the keys on the offset channel. I turn the offset button off. Now I'm seeing the keys on the supervised tracker that's the basis of this whole thing. And if I delete this whole thing temporarily, you'll see that the original tracker is still there. It's completely separate. So if you're going to go and create several different offset trackers from a single supervised tracker. You ought to get that initial supervised tracker down pretty well once you go and start cloning these different copies of it. If you do need to make a change in the underlying supervised trackers, you'll need to do it on each of the different supervised portions of the offset trackers. So, you know, you just want to take a look at the supervised tracker first before you start making a lot of clones. That should be pretty much uh, common sense. And, you know, even if you do need to do that, um, it's, it's straightforward enough. So that should give you an idea of how this offset tracking is supposed to go. Enjoy.